Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, we're gonna be talking about the new collection from Fantasy Cosmetica. So this is the Cradled in Ice collection. This is already available. They did send this to me in PR, most of the collection actually, um, but I'm late to the game because I was sick last week. So we're gonna try this out. I've already tried out the brushes that launched with this as well um, and see what we think and see if this is worth the hype and we're as good as the other stuff that we've tried from Fantasy Cosmetica. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Colin. I'm a non-binary Latinx scientist and lover of makeup with a definite soft spot for indie makeup and high-end makeup. And I tend to take a pretty analytical approach to the content I make, be it trying something new or talking about things I already know and love. And I have new videos every week, so I'd love to have you subscribe. <laughs> So before we begin, I will have timestamps for everything down below, for swatches, for the look, for the final thoughts, all of that. This is going to be a first impression for most of this, not an in-depth review, but I have tried pretty much everything from the brand so far, so I, it's kind of an informed first impression. Um, but I do want to say I'm sorry that I haven't posted a video in three weeks now. I Life got crazy for like a week or so where I just energy was low, my chronic fatigue was really high. The couple days that I wasn't like doing stuff every day after work, I was just like too tired to function. Um, and then I got a sinus infection. <laughs> so, um, I'm still a little sniffly. I'm almost done with the antibiotics and feeling much better. I can actually breathe. I have a voice again. I did kind of lose my voice. So, trying to film again, although I haven't worn makeup in two weeks and haven't filmed in like three and a half. So it feels very weird <laughs> to be sitting here. Um, everything feels a little weird. I feel a little anxious. <laughs> um, but also my sinuses are definitely not 100%. Um, so I apologize for any sniffles. But really ex excited to try this out. I did put a poll on my community page to ask if what you'd want to see first, this or the new Nomad collection. I also have some other stuff. Uh, Mez Beauty sent me some stuff a while ago that I've just been sitting here. I just haven't had a chance to try. I got the new um, uh, green palette from Shine by SD. Uh, I've got the new Nomad collection, like I said. So I've got some other stuff here that I'm gonna be playing catch up with for a little while. Um, and I bought a couple things that supported recently that are on their way. So um, we'll talk about that stuff later and hopefully I'll start, be cat I'll start catching up on video soon. So, like I said, this already launched. I was sick when this launched, but this launched on the 16th. Today is the 20th, so I am four days behind and a whole week behind when they sent this to me, because um, they announced it on the 13th. <laughs> um, but this is already launched. I do have an affiliate code with Fantasy Cosmetica. It's Bones, it'll save you 10%. Someone already did use it the day it was launched, so very thankful for that. Those little bits help support the channel a lot. Um, so this is the Cradled in Ice palette, which is their biggest palette so far. This is a 12 pan. All their other ones have been nine pans. We have some holographic shadows, which they first, their hollow chromes first launched with the Lost Library collection, which I have here. Uh, there's four of them. I just have them in this empty palette. Um, and then there was, uh, two gel multi-chrome things, um, but they were flaky shadows, um, and I'm not really one for flaky things. Like sparkly, yes, but flaky, not really so much. And I don't really want to put gel in my eyes. Those were $19.99 a piece. I do have the price for everything. So this is $44.99 before discount code. A little bit more expensive, but it is bigger. Um, these shadows are $14.99 a piece, or you could buy a bundle for $54.99. These are just a couple of Sydney Grace things. Um, the gel multi-chromes, $19.99 a piece. Uh, I did not get those just because they didn't sound like something for me. Or $36.99 for both of them. And then there's some brushes. So we've got some face brushes that I've already used a couple times. This is the second time I've worn makeup in three weeks, so, uh, or two weeks. And then face brush set, so, or eye brush set. So the face brush set is four pack and you can get them individually. So we'll go through that in a minute or as a face bundle. And then the eye brushes you can also buy individually or as a bundle or a bundle of all of them kind of like I got. So I do want to do swatches of the palette and the eye sh the single shadows. Uh, I think we'll do that later. 
um, and then we'll do I'll Live on the Eye so we can try out some of these, see if the consistent if it's consistent with their other shadows. But let's talk about, I already talked about gel things, I don't have those. So let's talk about the brushes real quick. So these are the face brushes. I've already used these, you can see they have some makeup on them. So we have the F1, F01, F02, F03, and F04. So I used all four of these today. The F01, this retails for $19.99. It is a small little brush. These are all synthetic, cruelty-free um, brushes. Uh, I tend to be a natural hair brush preference person. Um, most of the brushes I use on a daily basis and most of the brushes I own are natural hair, but I know a lot of people don't like those or you know, can't buy them because they're too expensive or they're, they only buy cruelty free things, you know, things like that. So it's good to try out some th synthetic brushes and see how I feel. Um, so that's kind of my perspective is as someone who prefers the feel and use and performance of a natural hair when I'm coming at these, I also do really like Sigma brushes. I've tried Lunar Beauty's brushes. I've tried Trixie Cosmetics brushes. Um, ColourPop, some of those other ones. Um, then we've got the F02 and F03. These are both $24.99 on kind of medium sized brushes. And then this is $29.99 for the F4. So this is a small brush. I used this for my cream blush and cream highlighter. It worked really well. It is small and dense. You could probably do a cream contour with it if you wanted to. You could probably actually um, do concealer or something with it. Worked very well. It's very soft, very dense but you can see there's a lot of movement to it. So there's a lot of bristles in here, some fuzz, but they're still pretty pliable and have some move and they're a little bit longer. So this works really well. This is my ideal kind of size and shape for a cream blush moment because it kind of fits in some of the potted ones. It works well, it's about the size to like, if you're using a blush stick to rub on the edge of it and you can get kind of precise with it. So really big fan of this one so far. Um, the second one, this, they say, I have a little card. Uh, this one they say is meant, you can use it all over, but they say applying blush or bronzer, and the tip is more precise so you can be more precise if you want or diffuse it. Uh, you could easily use, this is a really good powdered blush size. I didn't use powdered blush today. I used this today for my setting powder. So for under my eyes, because it has that point, it fits really well right here. So I did use, the newer Hourglass uh, finishing or setting powder. This is the Vanish Airbrush Powder. I have the shade Medium. Um, I did use this today with this and it worked really well. It's really soft. It's the right size and shape for me to set my face with. Um, I don't tend to use giant brushes to set my face, but I know most people do. But I do know, I do think this would be really nice for a nice diffused blush moment or bronzer, especially if you have a smaller face than me. Um, this is a little small for me to use as bronzer, but I almost have a very large human. I'm six foot two, you know, I, things are a different size in my hand and on my face than other people. Um, the number three, they say this is a soft, dense fan brush, versatile. I would say that is true. You could use it for contour, highlight blush, bronzer, foundation. I almost use this for my foundation today and I do think I will next time. I think it's the right size and density. It's gonna be a good foundation brush and the shape will kind of allow you to get where you want. So I'll have feedback on that later, but I do think this will be good for that. I did use this with, uh, to kind of put some contour right here and it worked really well. I did bronzer on my nose with it right here. Worked really well for that. It is very soft. And it is very fluffy. I don't have another brush that is quite this shape. So so really intrigued by this so far. Really excited to try this with foundation because I think it'll be a really good density and shape for that. And then the four is a big powder brush. I did both bronzer and powder with this. So I used the same setting powder kind of all over just to try it. Um, and then I also used this for bronzer. So I used a little bit of this for bronzer, um, but then I switched for this and I just like a bigger brush for bronzer because I have a big head, I have a big forehead, and it's nice to get a more diffused 
This is a little bigger than I would normally use, but you know, want to try in different ways. But very soft, very fluffy. Uh, you can see it's it's quite large, so nice so far. Now for the eye brushes. I haven't worn eye makeup in a couple weeks now. I do have something in my eye. Um, so I haven't tried these yet, but I am very excited to, and I will be trying these today. So we've got so we've got six brushes, and they are really interesting. They're very small, so I think those will be good for people with hooded eyes or who really like a small brush. So we've got the EO1, so I one. Um, I do really like the little mountain scape on the side. They feel really nice. They're, you know, plastic -y, but plastic, but they feel nice. They don't feel cheap. Um, so this is a very pointed definer detailed brush. You can see this will be really good. I wouldn't necessarily put shadow all over my lid with this, but doing the inner corner or like running something under here or using it kind of as a liner brush because it's so thin and pointy. Um, and this retails for $8.99. This is the EO2. This is just a small circular blending brush. Very small. I think if you have hooded eyes, you can see for me, it's gonna be really good for getting into that space or I'm gonna use it mostly in the outer outer V to kind of put a darker shade and blend. It's gonna be very nice for that. That is $10.99. This is the same price as the three, which is a packer. So you could use this for shimmer pack a mat on. Um, it's just a nice flat packing brush. I like these for under my eyes, especially this because it's kind of small and short. The four and the five are both going to retail for $12.99. Um, and they, this one, it says the E4. This is a fan brush. It's basically the eye version of that the face brush they have. So she says, ideal for creating smoky wings um, for an iconic cat shape. Brush is tapered to allow a soft, uh, softly create very defined and detailed lines or apply a little more pressure. So I'm really intrigued by this. I don't have another eye brush like this. Um, so I could see you could kind of pat things on like this if you wanted, but I do think, yeah, it's gonna be really good for smoking things out you could probably also kind of carve into your crease with it. Very interesting shape. This is just a big blending brush. I will definitely be using this today. And then the last one is the EO6, which is $11.99. And this is the one they recommend for shimmers. I can see that. It's a packing brush, but it's a little fluffier. So you can see this one is really dense and flat, and this one has a little bit of fluff. So really good, especially for a softer shimmer. Um, to like place all over the lid or something where you want to be able to buff the edges with as well. So really excited to try those out. So this is the Cradled in Ice palette. It's got a pretty, it's got a dragon and some eggs on the front. Really pretty. It is, like I said, bigger than their other ones. The other ones are nine pans, so this is a 12. I do think it's interesting that, I wonder if they'll have, I'm, I'm sure they'll have like a summer, more spring, like a more summery release because this is very cool toned for this time of year but it is really beautiful. So you've got a really nice mix of mattes and shimmers. So you have three blues from light, medium to dark, and then you've got these more kind of mauve neutrals. So this one's kind of peachy. This one looks a little more mauve, and this is like a dark plum, it looks like. And then a bright pink. This is the one shade that I probably won't really ever use. And then you've got five really beautiful shimmers. Um, they all look very sparkly. This one looks a little bit smoother and these look like they have a little bit more texture to them. So I'm really excited to see what these look like on the eyes. I have been looking at this for two weeks now and just been wanting to try it but not feeling up to it. So really excited for these. These should be magnetic and also available as singles, all their other ones are, um, but I don't have that confirmed. So there's only one or two palettes of theirs that I don't own because I did buy the first few and then I started getting PR from them. Um, and there is one that is blue and pink that I do not have. I can't remember the, life, the name right now, but I didn't buy that one because it just didn't speak to me. It had too many pinks that I knew I was gonna use. Palette. Started talking about it, then had a bit of a sneezing fit. So back after uh, dealing with that, hopefully I didn't mess up my makeup around my nose too bad. Um, but really, excited to try this out. I really like the mix of blues with these more neutral tones, so very excited for that. But 
like I started to say before I started sneezing, the last uh, palette they did was also a more cool tone palette, but you can see side by side they are very distinct. So here is it next to the Wizard palette. So you can see the blues are a little different. This is a little bit more saturated and dark. This is a dark purple. And then the blues, the, the light blues in here are much more pale white based. So I think I will do a swatch comparison of the light one here and the light one here, but I, they're pretty different. This one has a lot more white to it. And then the Rogue palette uh, came out last year, I believe. And it does have a couple blues and then some greens and a purple, but very different. These would be really nice companion palettes, I think. So I think it is nicely distinct. Really excited to try this out. Okay, so let's get into the swatches. I'm gonna do the swatches before I try them out because I don't know what I wanna use in the eyes and I'm hoping swatches will help. So let's get into swatches. Like I always say beforehand, swatches don't really tell you how things are gonna perform, just really show you what they look like. Color-wise, I do have a, a medium skin tone, olive undertone, so hopefully it'll, it'll be helpful. I'll take my watch off. I don't use any primer. This is just so you can see them side by side and see them on my skin tone. So. Let's go down to my table, do some swatches, and come back to try them out, and then we'll be done for the day. Okay, welcome to my arm and my table. Here is the palette again. So let's open this up, and I'm gonna do all of the mattes and then all of the shimmers. So, I'm gonna do the neutrals first. So let's do the bright pink. This is the shade Hatchlane. Very vibrant pastel pink. And we've got the shade Adore. These are very silky. Kind of a dusty rose tone, hideaway. It looks a little more mauvey, yeah. It's really pretty, and then we'll do layer, the dark shade. This feels a little drier, but it is a dark shade, so that makes sense. And yeah, like I thought originally, that is a nice dark plum. So we've got bright pink, a rosy tone, Really pretty mauve and a dark purple. Those are really pretty. I don't think I'll use the baby pink very much, but I do think that'll be a popular shade. And then we've got the light blue Frozen. Again, very silky. Has a little bit of a, per kind of a little bit of a periwinkle undertone. This looks like glacial. And then Nest. These are all very soft. These are very soft. I have a bunch of powder on the table now. But I don't mind that. It just, you know, be aware when you're using them. So those are the mats. And then for the shimmers, I'm just gonna kind of go down. So we've got Frost. Feels like their normal shimmer formula. That's really pretty. So that's kind of a white, but I see a lot of pink shift and then like, like blue sparkle. It's really pretty. Snuggle, this was a little smoother. It's really pretty. It's kind of the, the rosy base of a door, but I see lots of little sparkle in it. And then treasure, a little more textured, kind of silver, but blue silver. That's really beautiful. So it's kind of a wet, white, there's like a white blue sparkle, but if I hold it this way, I'm mostly seeing like a sheer kind of pinky rose base. And then here is Snuggle, much smoother. There is lots of gold, blue, um, gold and blue, sparkle in there, maybe a little bit of orange along with that base. And then here, you can see this one's much more textured, is Treasure. And that's really beautiful. These are really beautiful shimmers. This one again has little speckles of lots of color in there. Even though it's not necessarily shifting, there's lots of 
sparkle. So it's kind of like a duochrome with lots of sparkle, like no match shadows. And then we've got the last two, which are crystal, which is probably the one I want to use today. Oh yeah. So that has kind of a dark purple base. If I hold it this way, I'm mostly seeing dark purple, but I'm seeing like a light blue over here, kind of a slate blue. And then there's bright blue and gold speckle throughout it. And then Embrace is another smoother shade. It's a deep purple with kind of a ready gold. Oh yeah. You can see it leans into the purple, but in person I'm seeing fully purple if I hold it this way, but on the camera I'm seeing blue. This would be a really nice one to use with that fluffier brush because you could blend the edges nicely. I'm hoping, oh you know, yeah, if I hold it this way, you might be able to see some purple more. And then the light is reflecting blue. And then we've got the four hollow chromes. I'm gonna pull those out. So the first one here is Nami. And it is a lilac looking shade. Oh, it's really pretty. I'm gonna do these on the palm of my hand so they're distinct. That's really pretty, kind of a lilac gray, and then it's got that holographic glitter throughout. And we've got, I'll do this one next. This is Boreas. These are very smooth. Kind of an iridescent green. Yeah, that is an iridescent green, bit of green to pink. Yeah, iridescent green to pink with the holographic glitter. And this one is Frederick. The light blue, mostly, kind of a gray blue. I see gold and green in its flip, and then the holographic sparkle in there too. And then the last one is Leah, L-Y-A. I am so covered in sparkle. This is a really pretty red copper. Yeah, I'm mostly getting red to copper, some gold in there. Very smooth. These are really beautiful. I'm hoping that's coming across. And then when yeah, this iridescent one is really special. And then because I said I would do a comparison, this is Incantation from Wizard. And you can see much more white based. I know like Jamila, these did not work for her. So these are more pigmented, less white. So that should be nice. And then the Lost Library collection are also holographic, holochromes, but no, si no direct comparisons. These are a little more earthy tone and then this like pinky purple, but these are more green gray. These are a little bit more vibranty, but also pastel. Really excited for these. Okay, I'm gonna go wash up and we'll be back to try these on the eyes. Here is one last up close look of the palette and the hollow chromes. Okay, so welcome back to my face. Now I'm gonna finally try these. If you're curious about the rest of my makeup, I'll have it in the description box, but it's a little bit of my Pat McGrath um, foundation. I am wearing my Victoria Beckham blush, um, Victoria Beckham bronzer. And then my highlighter is one of the new Surratt liquid highlighters. They sent me all three. This is the shade Chi Chi, which is a nice bronze, but kind of in a light layer. It just has a really nice glow to the skin, if you're my skin tone or darker. The middle shade La May is definitely a little, there's more contrast between it and my skin, even though it is, I thought it would be like right on par, so it definitely looks like highlighter. This just kind of gives a very natural glow. And then used the new Hourglass powder. So, and then the lip has been 
the lip I've been wearing when I am wearing a lip. And it's one of the YSL. Like I said, any makeup and high-end makeup. So I'm going to put a little bit of my NARS eyeshadow base down because I use it with all of my eyeshadows because I have fairly oily eyelids. And then I think I'm going to use the blues today. Blue is my favorite color. And I just, I want to see how these ones work. So I think I'm going to start, I'm just going to work light to dark. I often start in the middle, but I do want to see how well Frozen works. So I'm going to pick Frozen up on the EO5. I'm just going to tap a little bit. Tap off, always tap off. And I'm going to dust that no way crease. So it is definitely a light shade but I think a light shade that will still work on a decent number of skin tones. The brush is very soft. This is my first time using any of the eye brushes. And I think it's working nicely. I do think I kind of wish I would have started with the medium blue, but that's fine. It's very bright. I'm gonna take use the same brush. I'm gonna go into the medium blue. Picks up a lot. And I'm gonna buff that in as well. This is a really pretty blue. And it's blending out nicely. The brush is working well. Obviously, I won't have a full review until I use it with my other normal brushes and try out all the shades and try these with other products, but, you know, after being sick for over a week, I'm just excited to play with some makeup. It's very blue. <laughs> okay, I'm going to pick up the small one that I said I would use for the outer corner. This is the EO2. I'm going to pick up a little bit of Nest, and I'm going to place that out here. I like this brush a lot. I like this shape. I have one like this. I have a couple like this from Refer that I use really regularly and one from Sigma that I use like this. It's the perfect shape to tap right here. You can kind of do a wing shape if you want, but then it works perfectly to blend in to the crease. If you wanted, you could always start with this, put it into the crease and then use this to buff over it. That would be a good method, especially if you have smaller eyes. Start small and work out a little bit. These are very pigmented. When I had the last couple times I wore eyeshadow, I wore Byredo, so and YSL. So not the same kind of formula at all. There's no skipping. Yeah, these are really good blues. Um, okay, I'm gonna do this on the other side real quick. Be right back. Okay, so I just repeated all of that on the other eye. I think I did a better job on the right side, but that's fine. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna try this brush with the shimmer. I'm not sure. I feel like it's a little too fluffy to use with something with texture like this, but I wanna use Crystal and Embrace. I think I'm gonna put a little bit of Embrace on the outer part of the lid. It's really pretty. Yeah, that's really pretty. There's a lot of sparkle, but it is a very smooth shadow. And I think it works well with the blues, but it'll work really well if you use layer, which I can actually pick up a little bit of layer with that too. Just kind of tie it in together. Yeah. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of layer again on this side. And then a little bit of embrace. Okay, and then for crystal, I'm gonna use my finger. That, that's so pretty. I, 
I know the camera's not gonna pick up how pretty this is. It's so sparkly. I got a little bit up there and then I'm just gonna kind of tap. I don't care that the sparkles are going everywhere. Already got a little bit up of the crease, so might as well just continue it. That way you can kind of see some of that sparkle. That's, this is really pretty. Definitely easier to control the brush. And I just got it all over. Okay, you need to fix that now. Really beautiful though, and I think I want to take a little bit of that. What was that? That was Boreas, this shade. Pick up a little bit right here. Yeah, that iridescent, like pinky green. You can see it just adds a little bit of something extra right there. Okay. These shimmers, wow. Okay, I'm gonna go clean up my hand a little bit, clean up my inner corner and put some mascara on and we'll write back for final thoughts. Okay, so I'm back and this is the finished look. All I did was clean up some of the sparkle right here and throw mascara on. It's my Lisa Eldridge mascara. I really like this look. I was just kind of throwing stuff on and it's so sparkly. Like the mattes are really nice. They're the normal Fantasy Cosmetica formula. I think these are a little bit, there's a little bit less white to some of these blues, so I think that they'll be a little bit more universally usable than some of the ones in the, the Wizard palette. But the shimmers in this, obviously I only use two, but I swatched them, and these are really exceptional shimmers. They are very dimensional, very sparkly. These are, these are some of the best shimmers if not the best shimmers that they've done so far, I feel like each palette has gotten better. And like, looking back at the Wizard palette, you had some really dimensional shades, but you also had, these were pretty, but like, not as special as this. Same with, this has a lot of dimension to it, but like, I don't know, something about these are even prettier than usual. So, I am very excited to keep playing with this. I, I mean, I hope it's coming across on camera how reflective and how shiny these are and just how much sparkle there is. If that's your thing, you're gonna love these if you haven't already picked this up. But you do have to like more bluey purple leaning tones, but like, if you do, these are really pretty. I'm excited to keep playing with these. Obviously this is in a full review, this is just a first impression, but First impression wise, they they really outdid themselves with this one. So this is a little bit more expensive, but you do get really great shadows, really great shimmers and an extra row of them, so, or an extra column of them. So like, I'm not mad about it. I would pay the $40 for this. And then these, really beautiful as well. I've only, you know, have a little bit of one of them. It's this one right here, Boreas. I only have a little bit of that on, but from swatching these, I think I'm gonna like these a lot. I really love the ones from Lost Library. They were some of my most used shadows last year, so I have a feeling these are gonna join those. I'm gonna need to put all of them in one palette, I think. But I'm very excited. So, shadows, unsurprising, really great quality, but I feel like even better than normal. Like, these are really good. I haven't watched anybody's reviews or anything yet, so. I don't know what other people think, but from what I can see, these are re just, they really outdid themselves. And then as far as the brushes, I will report back. Brushes are an investment. You should keep them for a long time. They're not the cheapest thing, but I am very excited about these. I think they are very soft and they seem to be working really well in the two times I've used the couple of the face brushes and the one time using these so far. I think my favorite brush of the eye brushes is gonna be the EO2. It's just like that perfect size and shape for workout here and then buffing out with this one. So I will keep using the other ones and report back uh, at some point in the future, but so far so good. 
really like these. Don't think they'll replace my Sonia J and my rougher brushes, but I do like having synthetic brushes for cream shadows or certain really colorful things or just when I, you know, need them. So thank you again to Fantasy Cosmetica for sending these over to me. Like I said at the beginning, I do have an affiliate code with them. It is Bones. It'll save you 10%. If you do use it, I greatly appreciate it. Um, and yeah, let me know what you think of the look, what you think of the collection. Have you already picked any of it up since it's already available? Let me know. I'd love to hear your thoughts and chat with you all in the just comments, um, especially since I haven't been able to in the last couple weeks. Um, it'll be nice to chat with you all again. So let me know what you think. As always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and I will see you all in my next video.